Geraldine Ung was born in 1959 at the cusp of her country's birth. All right, good morning, class. <laughs> now she's celebrating 40 years as a school teacher. Influence of art. She's going back to where she started, revisiting places, faces, and phases in a critical time when she and her nation were coming of age. It's the start of a school day at Tsinghua Primary. School starts the same way, always, with a call for Singaporeans to unite with a new spirit. We, the citizens of Singapore, pledge ourselves as And the pledge for unity extends to the classroom. Who can understand what is a riot? Who knows what is a riot? Yes. Again, a fight. All right, a fight. All right. So it's a, a kind of fight. It was a very solemn... Veteran teacher Geraldine Ang hey, gets her students thinking about what can happen when people don't get along. You may want to bring in games. Different races fighting each other. Very good. If we do not understand each other's culture, then riots may happen. And this happened post-independent Singapore. The race riots of the 1960s are a low point in the nation's history. Few teachers nowadays can speak of them as witnesses, encountering the riots from lived experience. And then on a larger scale, it goes into a riot. But Geraldine can. She was born in 1959. And the thought of a riot, and the thought of some conflict. In and our during the 1969 riots, she was just about the age of her audience today. If it happened. As a 10 year old, Geraldine knew some of the background behind the riots. Now, at 60, she's reeling back the years to discover even more. I can fully understand and be aware of. Uh, what went on during that point in time and how critical it was at that time to push for peace, uh, to disregard any racial bitterness, hatred, and to just go on with our world in peace and amity. In order for the nation to progress, we must appreciate and embrace each other's culture and religion. And this commitment and this idea of racial harmony must be passed on to the generations to come in order for Singapore to stay strong as one nation. The riots were a dark patch in an otherwise happy childhood. Many of those memories were made here on Emerald Hill, where her school was located. This place is where my school is. For me, my primary school days were filled with fun. This field is where we play our chuck day and this is where we even play running, catching. Uh, we have our own game, we create our own games here. When I look back at the, at the photos, uh, how we celebrate National Day Parade was on a very different scale, but still the objective and the essence of the day comes across very strong. So uh, photos are actually, well, they, they, they are a picture of the past and uh, a story for the future. Some of those old stories revolve around one art teacher, a strict yet maternal figure whom Geraldine remembers fondly. 
The photos evoke many memories. Enough for Geraldine to plan a catch-up that's long overdue. At the new home of the Singapore Chinese Girls' School, Geraldine's alma mater. Hi, welcome home. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Rosalind Heng was the school's principal for almost three decades. <laughs> she started as a teacher in 1968, and Geraldine was one of her students. Can I just uh, say, it's so nice to see you again, Li yeah, Bing. really, it's you so know. nice after all these years. I'm very happy to hear that you've taken up teaching as a career, yes, and you've yes. been doing it all the time yes. after you left school. Right. For 40 years now. Yeah. Why did you take up teaching? Well, when I was in school, I had the best of teachers. Teaching just came to mind and I believe that I can impact others and I want to be a teacher like those who have taught me. Geraldine had aspirations. In an era when few women from most families could afford to follow through with theirs, many girls stopped school early. I realised that our girls actually didn't have very much opportunity on their own to further their studies beyond O-levels. Many of our girls decided they would go into courses which paid them an income. That was in the 1970s. It was only after the 80s when the government started to increase the budget expenditure on education that there was teachers available and uh, our girls became more confident. The families too didn't have to depend too much on their daughters going out to bring the bacon home, so to speak. The priority then had changed from surviving, bringing an income in, to doing their best and fulfilling their potential. So in art is the same, it's related. In art, Geraldine did further her studies. But her decision to be a teacher was inspired less from personal aspiration than it was from a sense of duty and service. It's 1976. Singapore has entered its second decade as an independent country. And already, the country has begun to make great strides on the economic front. Nineteen seventy six also marks the year when Geraldine embarks on a new chapter in her life. At seventeen, Geraldine enrolls in pre university studies at Raffles Institution. Boys form the majority of the cohort. Most girls of the time have more pressing obligations. Few study beyond the O-levels. One of them actually was my sister. My sister felt compelled to, to actually uh, start work early so that she can bring back some money to my mom. For myself actually, I dream of being a public relations officer because I like to talk. I like to meet people. I'm a very sociable person. Geraldine graduates and scores top marks in her A-levels. A ticket to university or the PR job she's been dreaming of. Instead, she enrolls to study here. It's now an international school. But back then, this was the teacher's training college. This place brings back a lot of memories, very fond memories. Back then, we had to go to school in the morning to teach and then back to school again in the afternoon for our lectures and the different modules to allow us to be equipped with the skills to go back to school to teach. In a Singapore still racing to develop and progress, Careers chose people, not the other way around. And teaching called. In 1978, Education Minister Go Keng Sui had this to say about the state of education in Singapore. Too many pupils were dropping out of school. 
levels of literacy were low and bilingualism was ineffective. For a nation with no natural resources to speak of except its people, educating a new generation was an urgent priority. Against this backdrop, Geraldine's grandfather makes a persuasive case. He says, why, why, why do you want to go into uh, public relation? Then I said that because I like to talk. I enjoy talking. I'm a very talkative girl and I like, I'm a very sociable, I like to socialize, I like to meet people. You see, but in teaching, you can do the same. You can put your talkativeness to use. What are you eating? Ah? Macaroni, ah? my favourite, no? Chicken rice. From there, don't put the thing on your nose. You talk the whole day and you also meet people. You meet students and they are young, they are vibrant, they are very, very full of energetic people that you would want to meet. So you, you put your, your, your uh, talkativeness as well as your, your want to meet people to good use. And it's a very noble profession, he said. It's a really, very noble profession because you touch lives. Once you are ready, you can start to create your own image. Touching lives is one thing. Geraldine has also made it a point to stay in touch with the times and technologies. And if she can learn, anyone can. Opening up to the left, and if you drag it down, you can resize it, yeah? They are so IT savvy, and this is something that will excite them, ignite them, engage them, and that's what we want. And this is the right way to go, and I feel that to be an effective teacher in the current landscape, you need to embrace technology. All the P6 teachers are involved, even the mother tongue teachers. So this part... Geraldine inspires all with her can-do attitude, especially younger colleagues. The next part will be the economic defense. I personally feel that the Madeka generation teachers must be acknowledged for they were involved in the nation building process. They were born even before Singapore got its independence and they have many stories to share and inspire our younger generation teachers. They belong to the era of delayed gratification, unlike the present those born in the era of instant gratification. They work very hard and believe that with hard work comes reward and success. It was 40 years ago when Geraldine started as a teacher. It started somewhere here in River Valley. This place has changed tremendously. So many high-rise buildings now. Before the high-rises, there was a school near here. River Valley Government School in 1978, which eventually became River Valley Primary, was where Geraldine first taught and where she realized her lifelong vocation. The 1970s were testing times, but Geraldine and her generation were determined to make their mark. Geraldine has been teaching at Tsinghua Primary for six years. You drank already? Okay, now you go back to class, yeah? She's seen an entire cohort mature. When the charges come to us in pre-1, we know that the transition is very great. So the teacher's instinct is very, very great. It's a maternal, even if they are not married, their maternal instinct will come out very, very strongly and we want them to taste their own success. No matter how little that success is, it is a success to each child. And that you can feel and find in every teacher in this profession. Your colour theory came in, useful. All right, you remembered your vibrant... Geraldine course. teaches art. Yes, very well. But the life lessons she imparts cover a much broader canvas. Not everybody has the same peak of excellence uh, at the same pace. Not all of them have the same kind of dreams, aspiration. So when you, you have a close relationship and you're able to foster that and the child trusts you enough to open up to you, 
All right, and with through your humor, through your care, they can feel it, and that's where you know that you can touch their lives, and of course, uh, with that, you can shape them. She will always bring me to Don Lok Wee. Teaching isn't just about textbook examples. Geraldine's daughter, Denise, recalls her mother's life lessons. I really respect how my mother has uh, been able to cater to both sides of the coin. Being a teacher in the workplace and being a teacher to us at home. My last time grandma used to bring me and godma to a uh, bakery. I believe that one of the major qualities my mom's generation had was actually compassion and generosity. Whenever we came into anything, it was always our duty to give back. Um, there was always this idea that we should always help people less fortunate than us. Whenever we received anything, it was our duty to. It was always our duty to share with others instead of keep it for ourselves. This street at Zion Road, near Geraldine's first assignment as a teacher in the late 70s, is where many of her pupils lived. The absenteeism rate was high for three, four days. I, I don't see the child, so to get to them, I really have to do house visit. For many of Geraldine's early pupils, school was a luxury. Many worked to support their families. But he said he had to make a living. He had to do some of this because he has to bring home some money for his mother. Circumstances forced them to, to, to be in that position. So to me, uh, it's heartbreaking because uh, I feel that children should grow up being a child, experience what childhood is and not being disadvantaged. All right, so, so that, that is where I, I feel saddest when I don't see that happening. School would be where a generation could build better futures. But going to school then wasn't just about training the brain. The daily routine nurtured the body as well. The two brushes and tooth marks were given to us by the Health Promotion Board. We distribute to the students and on each side of this drain, we will, the students will squat there and they will start to brush their teeth. Definitely it's important uh, to set aside uh, time to, to engage the, the students in the tooth brushing uh, activity because uh, uh, it is also a reflection of how uh, our nation is uh, moving towards uh, uh, ensuring that all of us grow up well. Geraldine has seen an entire generation of children grow up. She meets some of her old pupils from time to time. Today, the foodie meets Gilbert. Hi, Bert. Geraldine was Gilbert Lim's first teacher. Nowadays, he's a star noodle maker. He and another four or five uh, boys in the class were the most mischievous. <laughs> really, when you are talking, and he'll be spinning around. So you have to always tell him, uh, Gilbert, you need to look to the front. You know, you need to pay attention. Most of my generation, their parents, they are not educated. So I think this is a very big challenge for her during that time. She's like always uh, say that uh, very nice, th my encouragement word, uh, a nice word to me is like, I have to be a better person, to be good, they have to work hard. So in future, you will have a good life and you know, family too. So your younger girl? Just entered set one this year. Yes. Since when I was young, when in school, school days, you know, every time when I see her, she's just like a, my mom to me, actually. Because the kind of love she, she gave it to me, it's like, there's no word that I can describe it. Just like, I just love, love, love to see her very much, you know, every time I see her. Even right now, as I, I speak to you, memories just flood back. Right? 
I think uh, when I see them achieving what they set out to achieve or to dream, they, they really uh, uh, live their dream. Uh, there's no words that can express uh, that kind of feeling. How about McDonald's member during our school days? Oh my god, what? 40 years back? Yeah. <laughs> To okay. me, they are really my children. From that tender age that they, they entered, uh, that little hand that held my hand, and to the one, the big hand that now hugged me, uh, is, is really so, so fulfilling. Uh, fulfilling. Uh, the word I think, uh, if I were to sum up, is really fulfillment. So I wanted to show you something that I kept for a long time. Oh my goodness, so I kept all this. Yeah. And it isn't just the children under her charge who have grown up. Stephanie and Geraldine first met when Stephanie was fresh out of teacher training. So part of this was all my learning, how to organize events, how to bring the children around. And Geraldine became her mentor. You wrote to me, Dear Stephanie, thanks for your help on Saturday's activity and for the countless times you have helped me, which I've not gotten a chance to thank you for. So these are the kind of things I remember and I try to emulate when I write little cards for my teachers as well. Oh, yeah. so nice. So this is how you have taught me to look after the teachers as well. Jerry and many experienced teachers, they've taught me that we teach not the subjects but the children and teach them really to focus on learning to read so that later on they can read to learn and, and grow up to be whatever they want to be to the fullest of their potential and that's where we can come in as primary school teachers to really do our part to play our part uh, to bring out the best in them People of my generation, we are a group of people who wants to see the next generation getting better and doing much better than us. When I look back at the cohort that I have taught and uh, how I have impacted them and shaped them and to be who they are today and many of whom have actually achieved what they wanted to be, I come to realise that I have actually shaped their lives, touched their lives and make a difference. In a country whose only resource is its people, those who shape young minds make more than a difference. They are a class act. And they are the hands that shape the very bedrock of the nation, so that Singapore can continue to make its mark in the region and the world.